we first of all just want to thank you so much for coming here and support um, in honor of our son. We thank you for every prayer that you've prayed, for all your kind words. It ministers to us so much. We, we are humbled and even rebuked by your compassion. We don't feel like compassionate people at all compared to what you all have been to us. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. God is helping us. He is still good. And we are still going to worship him. It's not a, not a question to us. God, God has been so good to us. And I want you to know that. Um, even when we don't understand, we see his good hand. I'd love to tell you all the details. I don't have time to tell you details, but uh, before I forget this thought too, we really want to be an open book. If you have any questions, we'd love to talk about our son. Um, we've got great memories over those seven weeks. So please don't ever hesitate to bring up the name Ezra Blaze. Uh, we love to think about him and talk about him. So I want you to know that. Don't worry about that bothering us. We'd love to tell you about him. I want to share with you a couple of uh, verses that God has used in his word. And uh, he's used so, so much. That's another thing that's been so helpful to us. But listen to this. In Psalm 34, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Sometimes we think that the Christian life, uh, you may think that it's going to be nice and easy and perfect. And it's far from that. In fact, we're promised just the opposite. But as we have been uh, struggling uh, just in and out of grief, God has richly supplied us with more grace, uh, abundantly more grace than, than any grief we're experiencing. So I want to say that and testify to that. Now, as every father uh, in this room who has a son, you know you have big dreams for your son. I've talked with my dad and other men uh, here this evening about my hopes. We, we put a lot into the, we, we just racked ourselves uh, thinking of, of a name for our son. We, we really try to give it a good thought for all of our children. And they're not the most conventional names probably, but uh, um, Ezra means helper. And uh, we, uh, we wanted to see, we still want him to see uh, him live up to that. And Jonathan's message was a, a wonderful message. If he would be an instrument to bring anybody closer to the Lord, we want to be closer to the Lord through this. And if anybody doesn't know God, doesn't know Jesus, may this be an occasion. May this be of help to bring you to him. His middle name, Blaze, he was named after a couple of godly men um, that carried that name. And uh, I also liked how it kind of sounded fast <laughs> and strong. He's lived up to that. Um, I, 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 he was a strong boy. Um, he had shoulders. He was cut. He had big legs. And I was hoping that maybe one day uh, we'd hear his name maybe announced at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Maybe he'd be a football player or something. Um, they'd be quick. He came fast. He came three weeks early. And he left about 55 days later. God called him to himself. This, is, this was his will. He was never supposed to be able to walk and talk, throw a football, or run a race. That wasn't his design. God is showing me that. That wasn't his purpose for our son. What we wanted most is that he would worship and praise God. And 
we firmly believe that we got that faster than we ever could have imagined. We're very thankful for that. One of the things that was most heart-wrenching and, and just uh, difficult is he seemed so perfect to me. He seemed, I, I, I just really, uh, part of me doesn't want another son to replace him. He seemed so perfect. Um, but what God has shown me is that he's not perfect. Well, he wasn't perfect. But God's son is perfect. We need, we need God's son. I need Jesus. I need Jesus more than I need my son. I, I really don't need my son. I need the Lord. I want him to be my portion. We need, we need a perfect righteousness. You know that. Before we go into eternity, we need, we need something perfect for God to be able to look on us with favor. And no family member can provide that. But only Jesus can. And I, I will hurry up. My wife um, made mention as we were, just to kind of give you a glimpse of um, some of the things that we're experiencing God is teaching us. As we were holding hands walking to uh, the church in our neighborhood yesterday where we had a visitation, a special visitation service, we sat down in the pew and we wept as we saw our son. And my wife said, this is just unthinkable, just unthinkable. And as quickly as she said those words, it's like the Lord just put it in me. That, yes, but the gospel is unthinkable. That, you think of John 3, 16, we all know it. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son so that whoever should believe in him will have everlasting life. God sends his son to die on a cross that we could be forgiven and made right before God. That's unthinkable. That's unthinkable, but it's true. Prayer requests for us and, uh, and just some, some thoughts and challenges that um, the Lord would continue to help us to trust in him for his goodness. Secondly, that we would find Jesus as our portion and comfort. Uh, we, we love our daughters. They can't replace, they, they, they are not, I mean, God will use them to minister to us, but at the end of the day, if we put our hope in them, God could take them away just as easily. Our son was on loan to us for seven weeks. He really didn't belong to us. The things we have really don't belong to us, but belong to God. So I want the Lord to be our portion. That the Lord would teach us to number our days. It's 54 or 55 days to be exact for our son. And uh, my wife carried him 37 weeks. We were blessed to be, to be able to interact with him for a fifth of that time about seven, and I want to make, I want to, I want to make every moment count. I want to be living for eternity. I want to be living for the Lord, and I hope that that's your desire too, and if it's not your desire, I hope that it will be your, your desire by the time that you leave. Jonathan mapped out eternity from wall to wall, or from just seven weeks to however many years we'd be given, and it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. In all eternity, this life's a vapor. And then, lastly, that we would live like this with palms up in submission to God's will. We want to be just ready for him to take whatever he'd like. It's his anyway. So please pray for that for us. The night that the um, Sunday night in the emergency room, the doctor that had worked so hard on Ezra, and I've been told that there were about nine nurses and a really good doctor uh, that just would not give up. He came in our room, and and I kind of nodded to let him know that I, I know he's I know you're going to tell me that he's gone, and he knelt down beside me, and he said, Mrs. Klein, little Ezra did not make it tell me what was he like and I want to tell you what he was like 
the first time the nurses brought him to me in the hospital after they'd given him his bath and done his tests and, and brought him back to me, it literally knocked my breath out how beautiful he was. And I, I thought Eliza and Jersey were awfully pretty, but he knocked my breath out. And I called Justin. He, he had gone home to rest a little bit, but his phone was turned off. But I was just going to tell him, heads up, I'm going to warn you, he is so beautiful. Um, I called him Sweet Pea, which is not the most masculine name for a boy. But in seven weeks, that's what he was. He was sweet. And even as I held his lifeless body on Sunday night, I heard, I heard the words come out of my mouth, Oh, Sweet Pea. He was so sweet. Mm. Yes. Justin already mentioned, I didn't know he was going to mention the meaning of his name. Ezra means helper. And we do believe that he was sent to help teach us many, many things. Um, his mom and daddy and many other people will spend the rest of our lives learning what he was sent to, to teach us. And Blaze, his life, God knew that we would name him Blaze and that his life would be a blaze. A blaze of the glory of God that would just fly by and be gone. And uh, it teaches us how fragile life is. Mm -hmm. On Monday, we, we received his birth certificate in the mail, and on Tuesday, we signed his funeral papers. It, life is so short, and we have to be ready to meet God and make sure that we're trusting in Jesus alone to get us to God. Um, I also want to thank all of you for every hug, every email, every text message, every scripture that has gone deep into our souls. Even on my way here, a friend was texting me, the lyric to a song, in every trial and loss, my hope is in the cross where his compassions never fail. Every person and has been a piece of healing to us and we thank you. I can tell you that by the kindness of God, there is still laughter and joy and singing in our house Amen. with tears in between, but it is still there. Um, there are not enough hours in a day to receive the love that's trying to be given to us. Uh, I've used the analogy before, but I always had too much milk for Ezra Blaze, and it would, it would come, it was more than he could handle, and it would just come, come out of his mouth, and that's how the grace of God is to us right now. It is more than we can take in, and it's just running down, it's just running down, so, um, it, and I can also tell you that it is an honor, and we are unworthy to share in the fellowship of the sufferings of Jesus. And also, as Justin said, um, as a mother, I, I did get everything I ever wanted for my son. I wanted him to be happy. I wanted him to be free from suffering and pain. Um, I wanted him to have Jesus. And I got it all really, really fast. Amen. So I thank God.